Hello, hello. About to get started here shortly. What's up, Jordy? Hey, Abria. How are you? Good. How's it going? I am doing well. How are you? Good. I am good. I'm just patiently waiting. Patiently waiting for folks to tell me the food's ready on Thursday. You and me just <laughs> both. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, I'm sick that I'm not that I'm not gonna be home, but I'm excited. I'm excited for where I am. So hey, all we, is well. No, we will we will be catching up soon, obviously. So yes. there'll be plenty of turkey to go around. <laughs> um listen, you know, I'm not really a turkey person. I'm kinda waiting on that ham. Like yeah. <laughs> listen, I'm if, I, <laughs> no, I'm just ready no, for the dessert. Ahead. I'm just ready for the dessert. I'm not even gonna lie. I'm ready for the dessert. I'm Man. ready for all of it. I'm ready. For I will at dessert. least at least you don't have to worry about me stealing the brownies. Listen, um, you know, <laughs> we 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 usually don't fight too much because I like the ones with walnuts and you like the plain ones, so it balances out. <laughs> all as well. So that's that's the balance. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Abria Perry. And I'm on with my brother, Jordan Perry. We're going to be chatting through Black Friday, right? We're going to be talking about Black Friday, but from a conscious mindset, from a financially literate and financially well mindset. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let my brother introduce himself. I'll give a quick introduction for some of our Sent Me family who might not know me. And then we'll hop right into it. So Yeah, awesome. Me, Jordan. Awesome. No, thanks, Bree. So yeah, as as Abria mentioned, my name is Jordan, Jordan Perry. I'm Abria's older brother, um, born and raised in Boston, as it was Abria. Um, I've studied finance undergrad. I went to Villanova University. I also got my MBA at NYU Stern. Uh, I graduated from Stern in 2022. Um, I've worked in technology as well as in financial roles. And now what I do is I've run my own business um, called Sent Me Full Time. Sent Me is an ed tech platform that teaches individuals how to invest in the stock market. So we do a lot through digital courses, wealth management, um, and as well as through our software and other community subscriptions that we're coming out with. And super involved in Abria's business as well with FinStyle, we work collaboratively together. And we just do a lot in terms of helping uplift our audiences as well as each other to deliver great financial literacy content to you guys. So yeah. that's a little bit about me. Yes, 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 absolutely. Thank you so much, Jordan, I appreciate it. Um, so my name is Abria Perry. Like Jordan said, I am his younger sister. Um, and like most younger sisters, wanted to do everything that my big brother did. Um, luckily I had a wonderful example. And I graduated from Clark Atlanta University with a degree in business administration. I had a dual concentration in finance and international business. And then I went on to work in finance, specifically financial consulting um, for financial institutions and payments companies. And now I work in technology full time, but I'm still incredibly, incredibly passionate about finance and particularly personal finance. Um, going to Clark Atlanta, being from Boston, being from a bigger city, and being really, really um, connected to our community. I noticed that there were financial literacy gaps and disparities in communities of color. And that's really why I gravitated towards finance um, as a you know skill or an educational path. Mm -hmm. But I've been more focused on that personal finance and education um, you know, side of the house. I run a business called Finstyle where we help individuals to design lives that they absolutely love and finance those lives. So that is how we ended up with this really cool mashup of Sent Me, of Finn Style, um, and, you know, just making making the family businesses do what it do. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and hop into our content tonight. We were sitting down and having a conversation with our dad, um, who is truly one of our best friends. And we owe a lot of what we know and who we are as people, obviously, to him. And we were just talking about the concept of Black Friday, right? And some of the things that we normalize that maybe shouldn't be so normal or aren't actually the things that are best for us or that align directly with the people that we're trying to become in the lives that we have been called to create. So we ended up having a conversation about that and we were like, let's just hop on live and have this conversation with the community. Let's have it. Um, and not just talk about what isn't ideal, but help people to understand what could be ideal for them and what could work. So 
in preparation for this, Jordan, I was curious. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see how much money on average people typically spend between kind of Black Friday and holiday shopping. And the average amount of money mm -hmm. that Americans spend between that period is $1,500. Wow. Which, and that's just average. That blew my mind yeah. as well. I was like, okay, it'll probably be up there. And but that's just on Black Friday alone, not that's, Black Friday weekend. That is anywhere in between Black Friday and the end of holiday season. Wow. So let's say January 1st. But think about it. A lot of people do the majority of their shopping between Black Friday and actual Christmas. Sure. Because most people shop on Black Friday for Christmas gifts, whether that be for themselves or that be for other people. Sure. And then when you think about that, I mean, the average, like some said average, some said median. So, you know, yeah. it's like sometimes that's just in the middle. Right. Most people, a lot of right. people might be spending upwards of that. I saw something that said, you know, naturally, right, the greater the income, yeah. <laughs> that number climbs. Um, but even the incomes that were being shown were still pretty standard and typical incomes, even right. if you're in the upper middle class. Um quote unquote, right? We're right, speaking right. strictly economically. Sure. So I thought that was interesting. What about that sticks out to you? So honestly, for me, right? Like, I think that window being from the Black Friday all the way up into the holiday time, I think that's pretty vast, yeah. right? Because to me, right? Like, I think that w the other data point that I would really be interested in looking at is how many people are using like credit card and then also mm. like cash that they have, yeah. right? Um, I, I think I saw a statistic at some point, whether it was this year or not, but in terms of how credit card debt is correlated with this time of year, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially people feel whether they feel emotional, like where I have to spend more than I may have, or they feel like they're obligated even more to spend um, additional money on Black Friday at the holiday time, and sometimes money that they may not have, right? Yeah. So, you know, obviously, we talk a lot about how we manage our credit, essentially, and making sure that we're leveraging our credit cards when we need them to use and make purchases that we know we can pay off, right? Yeah. You know, we were raised where our parents would tell us, if you don't have it, don't use a credit card. Um, and I think that that principle, you know, resonates well with us. But going back to your point, right, like it stands out to me in terms of that window, I would be really curious to understand like that credit card component. But I can't say that I'm surprised, right? I think that, you know, with the past couple of years, particularly with COVID and everything like that, uh, the credit card debt is through the roof, yeah. right? Consumer debt is, a, is, is at an all time high. So I think keeping that in mind, is very important for any for any individuals and not to jump ahead in terms of kind of how we're going to yeah, build this discussion yeah. but those are the types of things that stand out to me no you know? absolutely i think i think the interesting thing about how i've seen conversations like this be presented in the past is that it feels a lot like being reprimanded but nobody's explaining to you why what you're doing maybe isn't ideal right. or where there's an opportunity um, where there are other opportunities for you to like reshape your mindset or, sure. you know, adjust your action. Sure. So I just want to go ahead and clarify before we get into the rest of what we're, what we're talking about. There's nothing wrong with wanting. Like we're not telling you don't what, what don't want what you want. We're not telling sure. you stop consuming. Right. At the end of the day, we're human beings. We have to consume to live in this world. And also you do deserve to experience life and experience certain things. What we're saying is mm -hmm. we should not be consuming in a way that we have to sacrifice our future security or dig ourselves into a hole. Like there is this sweet spot where right. you get to consume confidently knowing that you're not sacrificing your future security for your present you know joy or enjoyment um and that's what we do like that's what we focus on right how right. can you have this and that how can you become more financially literate you know business literate lifestyle literate to have an understanding of what it is that you truly want and understand how you can prioritize those things so we've talked a little bit to you all about, you know, what people are typically doing on Black Friday. Let's talk about what you could be doing alternatively. Mm -hmm. um, so I know for me, from personal experience, last Black Friday, I personally did not shop. I was about to invest in real estate and I was in a place where I was 
I don't remember if I was in escrow yet or about to go into it, but any outlays of cash, big or small, was just not in the equation for me. Mm -hmm. um, and prior to that, I was investing really strategically and using my money really intentionally to get to that point. Right. And what I'll say is that almost, you know, four consecutive Black Fridays having not consumed, really, I feel incredibly okay with that because the other 364 days of the year right. my needs are met and i'm getting to enjoy the things that i truly value right. um versus getting all of these things on a particular day and then forgetting about them tomorrow right so sure. we are making decisions today that our future selves can thank us for tomorrow right but on the times that i was consuming for black friday i was really intentional about what it was that i was purchasing and also what other things that I need did I need to do that were going to repay me for years to come. Yeah. So we're not saying don't buy that dress. We're not saying don't buy that those sneakers. We're saying don't buy five pairs of sneakers if you can't afford five pairs of sneakers. And even if you want a pair of sneakers, what other things do you want? What other ways can you invest in yourself and in your life right. that's going to give you a greater return and also be residually impactful for your life? Right. So if you have a thousand dollars to spend, let's go back to that analogy or that statistic, right? Yeah. That was fifteen hundred dollars people are spending. Let's just say a thousand. Right. If you have a thousand dollars to spend and your sneakers are two hundred, buy your two hundred dollar pair of sneakers. You have the cash on hand and invest the rest, right? right? Whether that's right. in the stock market, whether that's into um, you know, a course or a program that you need for your development. Right. Maybe maybe you're putting that into your emergency fund and allow yourself some padding or allow yourself the opportunity to invest in something that is going to repay you cash money right. and get your extra pair of sneakers a year from now, right. Right? right? So what are some of the ways that you have personally invested in yourself over the last year? So honestly, I mean, I think I agree 100% agree with everything that you're saying. And I think that just to, before I jump into that, answer yeah. your question, right? Yeah. I think that for me, I'm really big into delayed gratification, right? So, and, 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 and just in terms of my character and who I am, like I grew up playing sports, I'm really competitive. I like to just compete to push myself. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, right, like if I'm, I like to draw things and use analogies as we do with Sent Me to make things make sense, to make complex simple. So if I know that I'm gonna go out on the weekend and probably have a burger, I'm okay with, with eating my oatmeal making sure that I'm prepping certain meals, making sure that I'm eating chicken, eating salmon, getting my workout in, training very hard because I know what I'm gonna get on Saturday with that burger. However, if I get to the Saturday and I don't want that burger, it's okay because I know I put in the work earlier, that delayed yeah. gratification component. Yeah. And I think the same concept applies to a lot of what we talk about in terms of just kind of compartmentalizing different things and prioritizing what you want to invest in and kind of how you want to do things. Um, I had a couple examples that I was thinking about as I prepared for this live and I wanted to share with individuals and just kind of thinking hypothetically speaking, as you mentioned, like how you could say, okay, instead of maybe buying this item, what else can I do to maybe then leverage how that investment or what I do grows and then get that item, right? And not just thinking I have to jump, jump, jump on what I want to consume. Yeah. And like we always talk about consuming or owning the things that we consume. We talk a lot about that and we'll build on that, right? So I had an example here that I wanted to share, right? Yeah. Where let's say hypothetically, there's three purchases. And for me specifically, there's three things that I've been having in my mind, mm -hmm. right? A watch, speaker, and some headphones, right? And let's just say approximately between those three items, that's about $4,000, right? So for me, these de the delay gratification is that these are nice to have for me, but not necessarily what I really need to be quote happy at this current moment. So to answer your question, my focus has been investing in my business, investing in the growth, right? Of what I'm doing collectively, helping you with your business, you helping me with sent me mm -hmm. and really just taking that capital and investing into the types of things that are allowing this to grow to one give back and help people, but also allow the business to grow in a way that's going to be impactful to everything that we talk about with building out your portfolio and how you're able to add value, right? Yeah. Using your investing in yourself educationally. So instead of buying that speaker that I thought I invested in a course or invested in an individual that's been helping me 
um, with my systems, understanding how to essentially really grow, how to develop the business in a more effective way, blind spots that I may have not have known that I had that I was able to fill because I was able to invest that capital into someone that could help me, yeah. right? So that's kind of been how I been thinking about things lately in terms of prioritizing what I want to invest in. And then to just kind of drive that home with the specific example, right? I was doing some simple math here and I was going back to our example. If, it, if those three items were $4,000 total, right? And let's say there's four specific investments, investments that we talk about all the time. People may see them in the news, right? An ETF called VOO, which is the S&P 500 index fund. QQQ, which is another index fund that holds a lot of tech companies, NASDAQ 100, really strong companies. NVIDIA, which is a great stock. Mm -hmm. um, this is an investment advice. You could do the research and you can check out some of the articles and stuff that we share and BTC and Bitcoin, mm -hmm. right? Those four specific investments. If you put $1,000 into all four of those investments, VOO has returned 27.03% year to date. Mm -hmm. So from mm -hmm. January to now, mm -hmm. QQQ has returned 26.32% year to date. NVIDIA has returned 184.21% and Bitcoin has returned 112.39%. So if you sum up all of the money, if you put that a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand for four thousand dollars into those four investments, that total amount of money would be five thousand four hundred and sixty eight dollars. So that would be a fourteen hundred and sixty eight dollar gain on the four thousand dollar investment that you put in. Right. Mm -hmm. So reconfiguring that mindset to be the owner right, of things, right, of things that I want to consume, yep. right, and then using a leverage, leveraging some of that capital to invest in that speaker and those headphones and that watch one day. It's yeah. kind of how I've been really kind of like laying things out. Yeah. So when we talk about that delayed gratification component and investing in yourself, right, whether it's through the stock market, whether it's in your business, we talk about your ventures, your skills, whatever you want to do, build yourself up and leverage that. And if you really don't want that thing that you thought you wanted, then at least you know you paid yourself first. And you still have the flexibility as opposed to being more impulsive. And I'll pause there. 100%. So. No, I, I love that, Jordan. You said, you said a lot. You said a lot. <laughs> all, all great things. And I love where you started talking about kind of who you are as a person and how your investment strategy um, and really your own personal fin style is designed based on that. You have a clear understanding of what it is that you value. You clearly understand your priorities and you make strategic decisions that are aligned with what it is that truly matters to you. Mm -hmm. To your point about being an athlete and exercise, I think that's a wonderful analogy because I think that the way in which we approach wellness and working out right. is oftentimes, let's just talk about more broadly in the world. We approach right. things with this all or nothing mindset right. where it's like, we're going to see this in a couple months. Top of the year, everybody's on their game. January right. 1st, up in the gym, right. eating healthy, right. waking up at 5 a.m. Right. A couple weeks into the year, you're done, right? You skipped one thing, you skipped one day, you had a burger because you tried to go in with this all or nothing mindset. And right. that was never what was actually best suited for you. Rather than taking an approach that is in your best interest, that works with your lifestyle, that works with your values, that works with the way that your mind actually works. Right. So now you've fallen off and you feel like you're constantly starting, stopping, starting, stopping, when in reality, you could have just taken smaller right. bites. You could have taken smaller steps. You could have taken steps that were better customized to your needs and to what it is that you wanted to prioritize. When I was prepping for this as well, I was doing some research. You mentioned, you know, some great index funds and some great companies, you know, that are within those ETFs and funds that you were mentioning. And obviously, NVIDIA is super hot. I saw a stat that said, I think $1,000 invested in NVIDIA five years yeah. ago is now $22,000. Yeah. Drop me some fire in the chat right now if you could, if you could use an extra 22K. <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. It's insane. And you know what we call that? The eighth wonder of the world. It's called compound interest. Man. And I saw like that same what? post. I saw that same post. It's like what? I yes. I meant to send that to you. I saw that. Bro, same post. Like, does that not, not does that not make you hype? Like I know for me, when I think about the things that I truly want in this life, it it 
it's enough, right? Like the things that I want down the line are enough for me to adjust my mindset and adjust my habits now. Right. I want to take a pause because we have a question in the chat from V. Thank you so much for joining. She says, is delayed gratification a strategic mindset to have going into any purchases, even if you are saving and investing? I think I think it depends on the person, right? I think some people, you might not be motivated by a level of delayed gratification, right? It might be something that's useful, but you might be more motivated by the idea of, you know, serving your community. You might be, right. you might be more um, motivated by the idea that your children could be debt free. So I think that in Jordan's example, delayed gratification works for him because that's something that he's learned over the years that he learned from playing sports that he learned from our upbringing so if that's something that you feel like resonates with you i think it could be a really cool strategic mindset i think that the goal in it all is the same right understand what it is that you truly value mm -hmm. and allow that to prioritize immediate relief or gratification or whatever it is so yeah it's all delayed gratification but the ways in which it manifests itself might be slightly different from person to person mm -hmm. what do you think jordan no i agree i agree and i like the example that you gave agree and v like great question i really appreciate you dropping that in the chat and the and the one thing that i would even say to kind of build on that too is another another tip and something that kind of works for me and in, terms, in terms of planning and road mapping, I kind of like to back into what goal I'm trying to achieve. Yes. So for me, right, like I'm kind of thinking like, okay, if I want to have, I don't know, if I want to essentially, let's say go on this vacation, like what do I need to do to get there? How much money yeah. do I need to save? Like I know I want to, I love traveling, yeah. right? That's part of my fin style, right? So understanding like what I like to do, I like to experience, I like to travel, I like to play, uh, go to sporting events. So maybe go to the Celtics, be Boston fan and do that. Looking at the end and then backing in. So whether it's delayed gratification, like person to person or using like that end goal and then backing into that, it all just kind of depends. Yeah. Um, but hopefully that answers your question, um, V, and I really appreciate you sharing that. Yes, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Let's just pause for a second and yeah, give a no. round of applause to our community. Thank you all so much for joining. I hope you guys are prepping and gearing up for a great holiday. We appreciate you. Um, if you're just now joining, we are just talking about Black Friday, kind of holistically talking about um, consuming and strategic consumption. Um, talking about some of our personal investment practices um, and the things that help us to make more intentional decisions when it comes to our lifestyle and our finances. So that is what we've been chatting about. If you're just joining the call, we're so happy to have you um, or joining the live. So happy to have you. Uh, so, yeah, that's what's going on. I mean, what else? What else do we have, Jordan? Brie, I got one for you. I got one for you, right? Okay. You know, so, you know, just kind of thinking about this stuff too. So what, what's the best investment that you would say you've made in yourself, right? And what made it worth it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a pretty loaded question. Um, but you know, we, I think it's really good to reflect, right? Because yeah. I think reflection is essentially tying in and making you really reflect on where you're trying, where you are, mm -hmm. what you've achieved and where you want to go. So yeah. I think sitting around and really reflecting on that, right? I'd be curious to yes. understand what it, what is that for you? No, absolutely. I love that. That's a really good question. And I think to your point about reflection, that's where we always start from a fin style perspective. Right. Any micro lab or workshop of ours that you join, any video that you watch, a level of res uh, reflection, introspection, self-awareness is always where we start. Um, and I think for me, when I sat down and I really thought about the, the person that I wanted to be, the woman that I wanted to be yes. um, and grow into, how I wanted to be able to show up for myself and the people that I love, including, you know, my future children and my right. husband one day, right? And just the ways in which I wanted to show up, that had me, that made me sit down and think about how do I actually care for myself? Mm. Um, and not, I don't want to just survive. Like I want to thrive. Like how, what do I need as a person to become the best version of myself and also sustain and maintain that person and continue to grow and develop. Mm. So I would say the best 
investment that I've ever made in myself is in my wellness, like total mm-hmm. wellness, love- mental, yeah, physical, that. emotional, spiritual. Um, for me, that looks like exercise. That looks like me finding exercise and movement that works sure. for me and sure. learning to not beat myself up. Yes. Um, so there was a big mental portion of that. Um, you know, counseling, therapy, whatever it might be, getting an unbiased opinion and right. not going into those spaces, not reserving those spaces for chaos and catastrophe, sure. but having somebody on tap and kind of almost on payroll to be able to talk to about anything, yeah. right? It could be this person cut me off today right. on 85. Right. It pissed me <laughs> off. <laughs> <Not even wild. laughs> they, pissed me, they pissed me off. That's what it could be, yeah. right? But creating a space where I have a team and I have the resources that I need to prioritize my overall wellness, yeah. my spiritual wellness. That looked like me finding a job, right? Finding work, designing my life in a way where first thing in the morning, I can sit down read my Bible, take my time, get yeah. myself together, right? And start my day off, right? right? So all of those things require a level of financial fuel, right? right. <laughs> as much as my counselor might love me, this is her job and baby girl needs to get paid, okay? Absolutely, right. Um, right. <laughs> as much as my trainers or my gym or whoever love what they do at the end of the day, it's a business and they need to get paid. Right. So to me, all of those things are investments and I trust and believe that as long as I am taking care of myself as long as i am living and breathing as long as i am functioning and not just functioning but functioning optimally that i will be able to recoup and create income like to me income is always going to be incoming i need to just keep myself together and keep myself thriving so that i can generate that income and also leverage it appropriately and accordingly so that I can continue to live this life and continue to just live it to the fullest. Right. So I would say investing in myself, investing in my wellness practices. Yeah. I love that because not to cut you off, but I just love that just from the standpoint of you can't really chase the dollar and chase things if you're not good internally and you're not good spiritually to me. Right. I stand on that too. So you, you want to enjoy the things, right? Yeah. And like I said, with this whole conversation, right? You know, it's all about you investing in the things that you really value, what your fin style is, right? Understanding how you see your future self, yeah. right? Yeah. Really just understanding and not allowing like the external, yeah. right? Just getting yeah. hyped up with the shopping move, really. If they, yeah. you don't want to do the Black Friday thing, don't do it. If you yeah. want to prioritize something else, you want to point to yourself, you do that, right? Yes. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you can go to sleep at night knowing that you're happy, achieving the goals that you want to achieve based off of the things that you value. That's all that really matters. Yes. Um, so yes, I, yes, I, I yes. love that. And I think that that was very eloquently said. So I love that. Thank um, you. Appreciate so, I mean, it. Look, what are we at? we got a couple more minutes here too. Brie, how, you know, let's talk a little bit about what people can expect too. Yeah. How can people tap into more of what you have to say? And, you know, I got some things to mm-hmm. say a little bit too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all good things, all things, all good things going over in the Fin Style universe. We are currently running sessions of our Planning with Purpose Micro Lab. Um, if you did not join a session in 2024, do not worry because we will have plenty more in 2025 and we will be running one more session in December. So if you're interested, feel free to send me a DM or sign up for our wait list. It's linked in my bio as well as our Fin Style bio. But this is really just an incredible space for ideation, for education, for you to get clear on what it is that you want, get clear on what it means for you to design a life that you love and finance that life. Mm -hmm. So we do all good things over there. It's a two and a half hour long virtual session. We do them in small groups so that people can interact with each other, learn from each other. Um, And that I get to the opportunity to learn from you all as much as you get the opportunity to learn from me and the team. Um, So that's what we have going on. As always, we have tons of YouTube content coming out, tons of uh, content coming out on the FinStyle page and my page as well. So you can always catch us here chit-chatting and yeah, sent me and FinStyle. We work really closely together as well as a couple of our other family businesses. So 
everything that we do, um, any resources that you need, you have the opportunity to kind of learn and um, grow with many of the members on our team. So if you're interested in working with myself or working with Jordan and the Sent Me team, definitely let us know. But mm -hmm. they have some cool stuff coming up, so I want them to shout that out. Yeah, no, listen, the Marco Lab is fire. I know all of what's going on. Rhea and the team have been cooking up a lot of heat, so definitely check out the Marco Lab. Um, I think that y'all are going to enjoy it. I've benefited from the Marco Lab personally as well. It's a great investment for me. So, you know, check out the Marco Lab. Shameless plug there. Uh, in terms of the Sent Me universe, we've got a lot of great stuff going on right now. Um, you can check out the Sent Me website at www.sentme.com. Um, as I mentioned, to start this conversation, we have a course that we have launched. We've been running that course for about a year. It's an on-demand course. Essentially, you can watch our videos on demand. We have um, a portal. It's an online portal. So you'll essentially go to www.sentme.com. You can go check out our course called Unlocking Financial Mastery. You'll watch the videos on your own time. You'll have access to our AI software stand which allows individuals to learn about financial concepts using analogies. We have quiz assessments baked into that entire learning um, methodology. And we also have a lot of resources, whether it's our budget tracker, our eBooks, all within Unlocking Financial Mastery. We also have another service called our Sent Me Total Money Makeover Program, which is wealth management. We have a licensed wealth manager on our team who is incredible. We have great team members, great experts um, that do a lot and manage a lot of our money, right? So. Um, Abrea could tell you more about that as well, too, offline for anybody interested. But we work with a lot of individuals ranging from firefighters to consultants to doctors to, you know, any individual that's a professional or anybody that wants to learn how they can manage their money more effectively. And then we are also coming out next week with a community group that is going to be incredible. Um, this community group is where we're going to be hosting a lot of guest speakers and individuals to be able to learn from experts within finance and other areas of business, shining light on things that exist, maybe some things that seem like myths and debunking those myths and having engaged discussions. And there'll be an aspect of professional development there too. You never know who you may meet in the Sent Me community group. You may meet yeah. somebody that can be involved in your next venture. You may meet a venture capitalist that's speaking to individuals and can possibly maybe put you in contact with someone for an idea that you may have. But that's what we're all about here is building an ecosystem, share financial literacy and uplift our individuals and our community and beyond. So check us out. Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. All good. <laughs> All good things, all good things. To me, it's absolutely wonderful. And like we told you all, we operate as a family of brands. We often say that mindset is primary and skill set follows closely after. So come over, rock with the Fin Style family, get your mindset right so we can funnel you over to sit me so you can work with our wealth managers. Um, we have an incredible CPA on the FinStyle team, as well as some other incredible Amen. financial experts and business experts. Amen. If you are in the Boston area, also be sure to rock with us for real estate support. We have an incredible brokerage, Press Realty. So let us know. We are more than happy to help you. And we also have members of our team that can help you across the country. Mm -hmm. Just reach mm -hmm. out and let us know what you need. So with that, I hope everybody gets some rest, get your bellies right, get your mind right Amen. <laughs> for the Thanksgiving holiday. We are so happy to have you. I think if we have a couple minutes, Jordan, maybe we can just wait and see if anybody has any last questions. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure. And then we'll go ahead and, and wrap it up and let y'all yeah. get to your evening. Drop, drop any questions that y'all may have in the comments. If like I said, any questions. it's time for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. For real. This has been awesome. Like, yes, Miss Edmise, please reach, reach out, Danielle. Yes, yes. catch the re replay. Great, my man. Catch the replay, catch the replay. We just catching up, y'all. Yeah, looking at the comments and what everybody had to say. Appreciate you guys. I got a question for the group. Do we look like siblings? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our parents, I guess. Do we, do we look know. like siblings? I got a caveat that we're siblings because somebody, uh, I think somebody thought we were married like That's why. a couple weeks ago. That's why. <laughs> they saw the same last name. I'm like, Ooh. you oh, know, yeah. oh, you you cool and all, but no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Miss 
Miss Edney says we look like yep. siblings. <laughs> We got our mother and Miss Anise. Yep, okay. yep, I think we uh, used to call it. We do. Look I like, know, mommy. We look like you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We kind of switch back and forth. Sometimes, sometimes I look like Jazzy. I yeah. do. It depends on the mood. Yeah. Depends on it what depends. I'm going through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it depends. It depends. I don't know. Now that you're wearing your hair braided, I think you you we look a little bit more yeah. like you. Trying to be like me. Yeah, pretty much. Trying to be like me, but. <laughs> all right well it looks like we don't have any more questions again we appreciate you all thank appreciate you so all. so much for watching Dandy. We'll see you later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right y'all happy thanksgiving right, eat happy good thanksgiving, everybody Take make care, smart everybody. investments yes, sir oh and last thing if you guys are going to make any strategic investments for Black Friday, it doesn't have to be in the stock market. It could be in a course. It could be, you know, a trainer. It could be delegating, getting a cleaning lady to reclaim some of your time, whatever. Awesome. Let us know. Right. Hit us up. Tag us. Send me and Finn Style on Instagram. And let us know what y'all are doing. We want to see what kind of money moves you're making. All right. Love Bye, you so much. Peace. Bye. Bye.